Hello, hello, hello. Welcome to the Crystal Crawford Show. We are in Vancouver this week. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful Vancouver here. I'll show you my city view. It's not exactly a water view, it's a city view, and there is something about the energy of this city that just like lights me up. I love it so much. Hi Aurelia, hi Michael. So um, I am so excited about this week's topic, and as I was creating this week's topic, um, it, it always, things always become more clear to me as I'm creating them. So. So as I was looking at what I wanted to talk about this week, I, I had in mind on Saturday, I'm starting a new set of energy pools. And for those of you guys that have been around Access Consciousness for a while, you know what the energy pools are. A lot of facilitators have done these months at a time. Um, Gary talks about them all the time. A lot of you have played with them. And um, I did a whole, hi you guys, hi Melinda's, hi Wes. Um, I did a whole series of these energy pulls last year and, and I included my piano and they were amazing. And then I just stopped doing them because after a while when you use a tool for a period of time you become it. But I just kept getting the hit to do another set, hi Julie. And I would say that pulling energy it has been one of the tools that has expanded my life and my business and my classes and money more dynamically than anything else I've ever done. And what's really funny is that there's a lot of times as I, as I change and I grow and I expand that I forget to add this tool. So I want to talk about that and I want to take you through an energy poll, but I also want to talk a little bit before we do the poll itself. Um, and if you guys know people that would really love to be a part of this, please share this with them because this is this is going to be an exercise in this video that you can use over and over and over in your life. Hi, Jeremy. Hi, Sophia. Whether you come and play with us in the 30, 60 days or not. Um, but I want to talk to you a little bit about first about what it about what we actually are. Um, when I and I said this in my email to my list today when I was inviting you guys um, I'm so glad Marion. Thank you so much. And hi, Holly. Hi, Suman When I was writing the email to my list today to, to all of you guys that are on my list um, And if you guys want to check out the energy polls just so you know, there's a link right above my head so you can or on the side or wherever the links live um, crystaljoycrawford.com slash new energy polls you can check out those there, but I was writing the email today and I was like, what is it, what is this conversation for me? Because there's so many different, there's always so many different tools you can use, whether you're in access consciousness or you've done recovery or you're in psychotherapy or what are you reading self-help books or you're an Abraham chick or whatever. There's always all kinds of stuff you can do. Why choose what? Like for what, re like, who, like who cares and why, right? For me, the only thing that has made a tool worth using or has created the reason and the justification in my world to use it is that it contributes to something that I would like to have. So it contributes to a life I'd like to have or it contributes to more money or it contributes to creating the planet that I'd like to see or it contributes to actualizing a future I'm interested in. If, if it contributes to all of that, I'm in. If it doesn't, I'm out, right? So I'm very pragmatic when it comes to tools and things. And so with that, that, that is really the reason for me in Access Consciousness because the shit works. It literally doesn't matter what tool I use in Access Consciousness, it works. And I remember when I first found these tools, I had just recently gotten introduced to um, a, a set or a, a documentary in a book called What the Bleep Do We Know? What the Bleep Do We Know? Oh, I'm so glad, Sasha. Cool. Um, Sasha, I think it's Sasha. Hi, Kim. So this book, What the Bleep Do We Know? And in documentary, and I, I don't know how, somebody introduced it to me, and I watched it and I was blown away. And this documentary is all about quantum physics. It, you guys, I'm not a quantum physicist or a mechanic, and I'm definitely not a genius, at least in that area. But the basics of quantum physics is that when you observe a molecule, it changes. And when you observe it with a certain energy, it does something to the molecule. And if you guys haven't yet checked out like the rice experiment on YouTube, you need to go Google that, the rice experiment. And you can do the plant experiment. They've done, people have done this experiment with a bunch of different things. But with the rice experiment, hi Kimberly, hi Katie, hi Afina Beauty, um, hi Valentina. They take two containers filled with cooked rice 
and they put on one of them the words hate or judgment over here and then on the other one love or gratitude and they literally project those energy they hate this jar of rice and they love this jar of rice and what happens to these two jars of cooked rice that are both left out of the refrigerator for 30 days is that the the one that's loved doesn't rot and the one that's hated rots fast and they've done the same thing with plants the one I keep hitting this lamp and it's making um, <laughs> same thing with plants you bully and you hate one plant it starts to die you adore and you love another plant and it lives so that's basically quantum physics and and there's all kinds of reasons that that works there's all kinds of mechanical and quantum scientific explanations of why that works but here's the gist of it is that molecules are responsive and they are energy and we are energy we are space between a bunch of molecules we are energy and space and consciousness consciousness is just the prima materia of what everything is made of that's what we're made of we think we're made of cells and skin and bones and solid things and we do a lot of feeling things and so that all feels really real but what's actually true about us is we are energy and space and consciousness that's all quantum physics so so I had this information but pre-access consciousness I had this and I thought it was the coolest thing I had ever heard of like I was like oh my god like you you mean you can just like be with something and it changes it yes yes young one yes young Padawan but I did not know how to apply that to my life and I and I remember this really distinctly because in the documentary if you watch it it's so worth watching go find it on Amazon um, I distinctly remember this, you know, the girl in the documentary goes through this whole kind of epiphany throughout the thing and by the end of it she's sitting in a bathtub where she's just so incredibly grateful for herself. And, and you know, it's like an hour and a half documentary where she basically moves from being frustrated by everything and stressed about everything and worried about everything to being completely grateful and of course it shows her world just being like opened up and lit up. And I was like, I want that. Like, I, I, want, I want that, you know. How do you and I couldn't seem to move myself from here which was like I was always upset about something in a fight about something crying about something I'm worried about something stressed about something to over here it was like there was this big grand damn Canyon right in the middle of the two places that I was supposed to be able to straddle with this information that I couldn't get there what the bleep do we know is the name and and that, that and that was all and there I was there I was on one side of the canyon and over here was where I was supposed to be and I had no idea how to get there and it's not like this book came with like a workbook or tools you could use it, it was just information it was like well here's the information about how things work and I was like oh, mm, okay left with myself to my own devices so then some not long after that I found access consciousness high low day I found access consciousness and I remember I remember in my first foundation class because there's bars which is a one-day class and then right after that comes foundation and I have foundations coming up all over the world you guys these are life-changing classes one's in Atlanta I've got one up in um, in England this year one in Calgary uh, blah 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 if you like to host and get people together let me know because 2020 is already filling up um, so so I took a foundation class and I remember sitting in day one going this is quantum physics like we're we're taking the energy of something and we're changing it and then we're asking energies to show up we this is this is all quantum physics and it was so funny because at the time I was um, I'd be just become friends with a, a physicist <laughs> who worked at the um, there is a center in Ontario, Canada that's a worldwide leader in the conversation in quantum physics. And I was telling him about this. He's like, yeah, that's all quantum physics. And I was like, oh my God. Which meant that I had energetically pulled into my world what I was asking for that I didn't know I was asking for, which is like, how do I apply this stuff in my life? And so I'm sitting in foundation. I'm like, oh my God, this is, how, this is the how. This is, all these tools are the how you, um, how you do what so there it was so there I was 
And you do, you get all these tools in Access Consciousness, all of them. All the tools in Access Consciousness are to give you access to the energy you are, the space you are, the consciousness you are, so that you can create. Hi, Bianca, I would love to come to the Netherlands. Let's, um, let's talk about that. Um, because if you don't have access to the energy you are, the space you are, and the consciousness you are, you're, I don't know if you guys have noticed, but for me, when I didn't have access to that, I was rocking around in a muddle of thoughts and feelings and emotions. Thoughts, feelings, emotions, and points of view. That was my muddle. And I was supposed to be able to do life out of that. Nobody had told me any different. You just communicate well enough, or you, go, you talk to people right, and you be right, and you do right things, and then that's all supposed to, to work, right? Didn't do the thing. So then I get access to this energy, space, and consciousness. But even then, in the very beginnings of my access journey, I still thought that the tools were to get me out of problems, because I had so many at the time, like, or what I thought was problems. I had relationship problems and money problems and body, like, just everything was a problem. <laughs> Come to Switzerland, I'm in. Um, Carol, Carol Zuccarotti, um, Okay, let's talk. You guys that are interested in hosting, give me a, a private message and I will connect you with my team. Um, so, okay, fine. So I was taught to function in all this. So anyway, so, so I forget now I lost my point, but the energy, space, and consciousness. So where I'm going with all of this is, um, hi, Bianca, I love the tools from Access. I'm curious, what is the difference between who does this belong to and interesting point of view? The difference is just the direction from which you're coming at a thing. So you can use, the coolest thing about access consciousness tools is that every single one of them are to get you to the same space. What is that space? The space where you have no point of view and total choice. Every single tool. Every single process, every single tool, every single one of the 10 keys to total freedom, every single class Gary and Dane ever do is to get you to the space where you're willing to be space and total choice and create your life. So your point of view creates your reality. That's quantum physics. If you have the point of view that a molecule is solid and you observe that molecule with that point of view, that molecule will stay solid. The moment you have and take and choose a different point of view, the molecule changes. That's how powerful we are as energetic beings. But when, you're, when you are an energetic being, which you all are, and you're functioning like you're a solid finite being, which is what we do when we think too much and feel things so strongly. And I'm not saying your body cries, that's a whole other conversation. But I'm talking about like sadness and anger and rage and fury and hate and regret and shame and guilt and all those really intense things that are actually not true. When you're so embroiled in that, that becomes your reality. You cannot see beyond that. So you can't, even though you're an energetic being, you are now energetically creating all of that as your reality. Is it reality is the conversation we invite you to. Always, that's, that's a conversation. Is that reality or do you actually have choice beyond that? I'm constantly inviting myself to that. Today in the shower, I had a point of view about money and um, a thing, like renting venues all over the world has been in my world this big limitation. I don't have the money for it. I don't have all these story after story after story. And today I was like, well, do you want to keep functioning from there or would you like to function from somewhere else? That's me being willing to look at that solidity of those molecules and that point of view going, okay, I see you think it's solid. Is it solid? It's not solid. And now all of a sudden that point of view goes, whoa. it's not solid anymore. Now a different point of view is available. Different choices available. Multiple choices are available. So I say all of this to say that you are an energetic being. Are you functioning like one? Are you functioning at the same, at the, at the capacity and the level that you can actually function at with energy? Everything we talk about in Access Consciousness from, hey, you're super fucking aware. What if 99% of all your thoughts and feelings and emotions aren't yours? Why could that be possible? Because you're an energetic being. There is no separation between you and anything else. Like this lamp right here that I keep playing music with. There's no separation between me and this lamp except the points of view that have created the separation. 
So if I'm willing to acknowledge there's no separation, I can actually be with this lamp energetically and receive from it energetically. And the moment I just started talking about that, I have my hands on it right now, it's, my hands started buzzing. Be why? Because I'm finally acknowledging and tapping into and being present with what's real, which is that everything has energy. Same with um, you guys on watching me live right now and you guys in the future. So right now I'm gonna tap into and I'm gonna pull all of your energy. Is it before that moment, were you, what was happening before that moment? That moment that I chose to pull something changed, why? Because in that moment I chose to acknowledge what was energetically true. The moment I'm willing to acknowledge the energy of something instead of the solidity of something is the moment I can actually receive from it and be a contribution to it, right? So now I'm gonna permeate me out into all of your worlds. That's the thing about energy is that it's instant, it's fast, and it instantly creates. And then what's after that is the actualization and the institution of the thing you're now being in the world. And so that's not the energy pull that I'm gonna do in a few minutes here, but that's one of the ways that you can play with that. But that instantly, like, instantly creates something. It instantly creates a different connection between you and I. It instantly, go, all the barriers go down, anything that might be in the way go down, points of view aren't relevant in that space anymore. Nothing's relevant except for the energy of the thing. This uh, couch that I'm sitting on right now, up to this moment, except until this moment, I've just been sitting on it, but I'm gonna tap into the energy of the couch right now and just ask it to soften itself around my body and just be with it. See, in, the, in these moments where you tap into the energy of something, and these are like solid objects, right, that I'm tapping into, that I'm using as examples. These aren't even points of view. Hi, Leone, hi, Adele. Um, you, can be, you begin to receive from them and gift to them simultaneously. Instantly, the moment you become present with something, this other thing occurs this molecular communion occurs. That's just what happens. And what we do, what I've watched so much, especially lately as I've been looking at this whole energetic being thing differently, is I watch us walk around, uh, here's a great example. Yesterday I was on a train, I, um, I, got, I flew into the Seattle airport and then I rented a car to drive up to Vancouver. Long story, but anyway, that's what I did. So I got into the shuttle to go to from the airport to the rental car center, which was like a five minute drive. And the only room on the whole entire bus was you enter the door into the bus and it was right in the middle of this big group of people with suitcases and nothing to hold on to. And so I chose it because bus. Okay, fine, I have a ride. What I didn't consider is that I had nothing to hold on to. And um, I was in the middle of all these, and we were going around corners and turning. And so it was an adventure in, um, cho in choice. <laughs> it was an adventure in receiving. Because what started to happen is I was surrounded by men, which was fascinating in and of itself. And all of them were really aware that they didn't want to touch me because they didn't want me to get the wrong idea. And they didn't want to put their energy into my worlds because they didn't want to make me uncomfortable, but they really wanted to support me. So they wanted to make sure that I knew that, but none of us, it was so bizarre. And so the way this world works. And I got yesterday how much we withhold ourselves, our energy and our space and our consciousness and the support and the magic we truly be because we've decided things. We've just decided things about it. It's imposing on other people. We don't want to get into other people's space. We don't want them to feel, we don't want, we don't want, we don't want, and so we withhold. And in that moment, I was getting to receive totally the support that these men really wanted to be for me that I was trying to refuse because I had decided I had to stand in the middle of these people all on my own. And, and then I was like, no, nope, what would it be like to just put down all your barriers and receive? And as we did this five minute drive that felt like an hour, 
the man behind me he was like don't worry we got you you got suitcases behind you you're not gonna fall over and then as my suitcase would slide to the front as we went down these other paths the guy in front of me put out his foot he's like don't worry I got this and the guy right beside me he just kept looking at me smiling he's like it's fun right like um there was there were so many choices available in that moment of how to be with this and so I started pulling energy from these men just to create this energetic communion with them so that there wasn't that awkward sense of separation anymore, where we could actually just be together and be in this awkward, tumbly, weird situation with a bunch of strangers. That is the capacity that I have as an energetic being. And you have capacities as an energetic being that you may or may not yet have chosen. In that moment, I could, I, I still had total choice, even though I'm an energetic being walking through the world. I had total choice. I could be in the middle of that situation and be completely embarrassed, which was one of the choices I chose momentarily. I could have made myself wrong for not choosing a place to stand that had a, a place to hold something. That was kind of dumb, like, hello. Um, what were you thinking? Not and rolling around in the middle of all these men. Like, you know, I could have judged myself completely for that. I did for a minute, for like five seconds. And then I was like, I wonder how much fun I can have with this. And so it just started to be funny. But that was another choice I had. And that changed the energy of things. And you guys, we have these choices available to us with every single moment of our lives. When you've got bills coming in, when you have not bills coming in, when you've got money coming in, when you don't have money coming in, when you've got crazy people in your life, when you don't have crazy people in your life, you have all these choices available to you. And this is our power and capacity as energetic beings. Every choice you make changes the energy of something. Every choice you make creates an energy in the world that then actualizes into something. Every choice you make creates multiple possibilities. So even in a situation that seems as small as the one I just described, I created energetically things that weren't available there before me. Anybody else in that situation couldn't have created those same things because they weren't willing to be the malleability that I am now willing to be. And so how do you use this capacity to create, like what does this be like to create your life and to add things to your life? Um, pulling energy into things that aren't yet actualized is what the energy pulls are all about. It's getting the sense of what you want your life to be like. It's just like we tapped into the sense of this lamp. We tapped into the sense of this couch. You can tap into the sense of me. You can tap into the sense of what you would like your business to be like. Your life right now may or may not be showing up the way that you'd like it to be showing up. And you may or may not have a cognitive grasp on the points of view that are currently creating it. The coolest thing is, you don't have to have a cognitive grasp on things. And if you go into trying to figure out why, all you're gonna do is hobble yourself with some story you have to make up based on a past experience that isn't relevant. What is relevant, if you're willing to strengthen it, is your ability to create. And as an energetic being, your ability to create isn't just doing. And it isn't just sitting on the couch being. It's using your energetic capacities to pull things into your world that you can't articulate yet. Every single thing that I've pulled into my world that's turned out greater than I could possibly imagine were things that I had no words for. Access consciousness showed up in my life from a pull that I had no words for. Um, I, oh God, there's so many, that's the biggest thing that I can, but I mean, I, uh, the apartment that I pulled into my world in the last four months, I had, I knew I had a sense of it. That was it. I didn't know exactly where it was, but I knew I pulled that into my world and that pull created me knowing where to go on, on what website. Um, I pulled becoming a certified facilitator into my world. I was having it and I didn't know how I was going to do it, but I pulled that. I pulled hiring a coach that I didn't have the money for into my world. I didn't know how I was going to do it, but I knew I had to have that. Every single thing that I've pulled into my world, and I, the list just goes on and on and on and on. I did not cognitively know how I was gonna have it. I just knew I was having it. And that is my capacity as an energetic being that goes beyond logic and marketing plans and fucking funnels and any of the other things that they tell you are the way to get what you want. So that is why energy pulls. That is why pulling energy. And the thing about I am making them into an event. 
because we're gonna do it every day and it makes it turns it into like a daily habit and we just choose it every day this is something you can choose to be with everything all the time and as you bring it into your conscious awareness more and more and more as a thing you do every day it will start to occur to you more and more and more and do every day it'll start to occur to you in those moments when you are looking at um, having money for something and you're like I have no idea how this is gonna show up well I'm gonna pull energy from all over the world like what would it take for this money to show up with ease and I'm gonna let little trickles go out to anybody and everybody who's willing to contribute to this showing up for me right so let's, we have five minutes left on this show. Let's do an energy pull. So I'd like you to close your eyes if you can. And I just want you to get a sense of where your body is right now. This is not required, but it is something that I add. So get a sense of where your arms are sitting and where your bum's sitting and where your legs are. Just get really present with your body. And then get really present with the room that you're in. And if you haven't ever played with this, I want you to expand you out into the room that you're in and then go 100 miles beyond that into the city. And as you're expanding, do it spherically, so down into the earth and all around you. And go 100,000 miles beyond that until, and then go 100,000 miles beyond that until you are beyond the earth and go even bigger than that. That's the space of you as an infinite being, okay? We're gonna pull as that space, not limited to your body, pull as that infinite space, okay? And now I want you to get a sense of what, would it, of what it would take for you to be willing to live the energy of what you'd like your life to be. So I want you to get a sense of what your life would be like if you were choosing to have the people in it that really lit you up. And get a sense of what your life would be like if you were living in a place that really contributed to you and nurtured you and made you so happy to be in it. And I want you to get a sense of what it would be like to have, if you'd like one, and you don't have to pull it, but if you'd like a primary relationship, what it would be like to have a partner that just adored everything that you are and was completely contributive to everything you're creating and just enjoyed the shit out of you. And what it would be like to have really nurturing, kind, fun, playful sex. And what it would be like to have never enough money and always too much to spend, where money was coming in with ease and you were, you were engaged and playing in work that fed you, that was, was not work at all, that was just the play of discovering what else you could create. And if you want to travel, I want you to get the sense of what it would be like to travel to all these new places and fly in and drive through mountains and get on trains that speed past gazelles. What it would be like to travel, you know, once a month, once every few months, twice a month. What would that be like? And then get a sense of what it would be like to create a sustainable future. Financially, sustainable future with your business sustainable future with your relationships and also then get a sense of what the world would be like in five thousand years if you choose all of this and then I want you to pull energy from all over the universe through that sense of everything and through your body just keep pulling you may notice sensations in your body, you may notice nothing in your body. I notice it right here in my chest area, but just keep pulling. And if I ask you to pull more, pull more until your heart begins to warm up and open up. And then I want you to reverse that flow and let little trickles of energy go out to every single person who is looking for you, every single person who's gonna to contribute to this, every single being, every single molecule, every single person that's gonna to contribute to this showing up in your world so that they know where to find you, so that energetically there's a breadcrumb trail that they can find you. And I just wanna end with this, what energy and space and consciousness can you and your body be to physically actualize a reality beyond this reality with total ease? And everything that doesn't allow that times a godzillion, will you destroy it and create it all? Right, wrong, good, bad, pot, pock, all man, shorts, boys, and beyond. And that is actually a long energy pull. It can be that fast or shorter. But you, if you do that every single day for 90 days, your whole world will change.
And if you come play with me on the 30, 60, 90 day adventure, um, we will have a mini class every day too because I can't shut up. So you'll get insights and tools from my life and my adventures and also a poll every day. And just know yourself. If you know that you're gonna choose this and you'll do it for yourself, great. And if you know you won't and you require somebody else to lead you, I'm so happy to be that person. Otherwise, just use this, use the shit out of this. And I'd be really grateful if you guys know people that would get something out of this conversation about being an energetic being if you'd share this with them. Because this is not a conversation that's really out there in the world right now. And, and my desire is that it be much greater. What would the world be like if we all started to claim and own and acknowledge our capacities as energetic beings, as infinite beings? You're so welcome, Carolyn. You're so welcome, Maruna. You're so welcome, Julie. I'm so grateful for you guys. And um, I'm so grateful for these tools. And I'm so grateful for the choices we actually have available to us. So have fun with that. Please share it. And um, I will see you on the polls. And if I don't, hopefully I'll get to meet you and hug you somewhere in the world. Bye for now.